So what happens to people who have increased uric acid or gout when they go on a carnivore or a ketogenic diet? First, let's just take a moment to discuss what uric acid is and what gout is. But before we do that, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that little bell so you can get notified every time we create a new video to teach you more and more about your body and how it works. Gout was first described 3,000 years ago by the ancient Egyptians, and then in about 500 BC, Hippocrates named it the unwalkable disease, right? Because it causes such pain in your big toe and in some people in the heel and some people in the ankle. It causes such pain that it's almost impossible to walk. In 500 BC, Hippocrates was the first one to note that there was a relationship between lifestyle choices that we make and this particular disease. And it was given the name, the arthritis of the rich, whereas rheumatism was kind of the arthritis of the poor. By the turn of the 20th century, gout was clearly associated with debauchery, intemperance, right? Drinking too much alcohol, all the bad things. It's almost like a sinner's arthritis. There's even some famous quotes from London in the turn of the 20th century saying that gout instantly elevates your social status. It was associated from purines in our food, purines in beer. So what is a purine? A purine is, see, when we eat food, right, it's gonna be fat, it's gonna be protein, or it's gonna be carbohydrates, but there is a fourth category. The fourth category is the cellular components, right? What's inside the nucleus of a cell, DNA and RNA. In particular, if those cells are very tightly packed together with a lot of cell nuclei, then we can have a lot more of this purines to dispose of. Now, now, of course, plants have purines and so do animal products, but animal products certainly have more. And it was associated with small shellfish, small fish in particular, because the cells are very tightly packed together, organ meats for the same reason, but also regular old red meat. But then, of course, there's beer, right? Beer has yeast. Yeast is a cell and it has a lot of purines. So anything with lots of purines, we would have to take those purines, send them to the liver, convert it into uric acid, take that uric acid and excrete it through the kidneys. Now a buildup in your blood of uric acid is gonna come from the overproduction of uric acid because you're eating a lot of these purines and that's what we always thought was the case too much beer too much alcohol and too much red meat or the inability to excrete and that becomes more of a kidney problem i think we're going to talk about it in the context of perfectly healthy kidneys there are certain kidney stones that are formed by uric acid crystals but most kidney stones are formed by other types of crystals so there's there's three different types of kidney stones now with that being said when somebody had an attack of gout we kind of had them go on a low purine type of diet and we would give them medications, medications like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs for the inflammation. We would give them colchicine. We would give them allopurinol, anything to reduce that uric acid, either by decreasing the production of the uric acid or increasing the excretion of the uric acid. But then we started to discover some new things in the last decade. We discovered that uric acid is again produced in the liver and can be produced by other things in particular refined carbohydrates particularly a sugar in found in fruits and vegetables and grains and basically anything processed called fructose so you may have heard of high fructose corn syrup is how we make coca-cola we put it in bread we put it in anything that's particularly processed. So this increase in dietary fructose without the fiber to carry it away from our small intestines results in that fructose going into our liver and our liver then turns that fructose into uric acid. So what we find is that people who get off of beer for two reasons, right? Beer is going to have that increased carbohydrate, but it's also going to have the uh, purines from the yeast. But if we get them also off of bread and refined carbohydrates and, and fruit juice and Gatorade and Coca-Cola and all, all of those things, we can dramatically reduce uric acid. And we also learned that uric acid is not just an issue of inflammation in our joints resulting in pain. Uric acid results in elevated blood pressure in a lot of people. And people who have high blood pressure that is not very responsive to blood pressure lowering medications should have their uric acid checked. So please ask your doctor to check your uric acid if you are suffering from high blood pressure. And the amount of uric acid you need in your blood to cause gouty arthritis is very high, let's say seven or eight. Whereas the amount of uric acid you need in your blood to elevate your blood pressure can be just above five. So there's a target for managing blood pressure to lower your uric acid below five. So that's something to be aware of because, you know, we tend to think, well, if I don't have joint pain and I have elevated uric acid, who cares? Well, 
that's not a good way to think because the increased stimulus for your blood pressure going up is always going to be there, but it's also pro-inflammatory. So what we know is that there are people who don't have very high uric acid who have gout, and there are people with very high uric acid who don't have gout. So what could be happening there. Well, what we also found is that gout is really an autoimmune disease. It's a uh, disease where when the uric acid crystals make their way into your bloodstream and then ultimately into your joints, it stimulates your immune system to overreact and start attacking. And it starts attacking those purines, it starts attacking the chondrocytes or the cartilage cells in your joints. And it's believed that the arthritic pain is due to the immune response, and it's the immune response that's really the problem, not the uric acid. Either way, we don't need to settle that argument in this video, but the more we learn about it, the better. Like other autoimmune disorders, there is a prevalence to genetics, right? So like just like in Hashimoto's, there's a, you know, men and women can have Hashimoto's, but it has a higher percentage in the female population. However, it's about 90% men for gout. So if our kidneys are healthy, we're on a carnivore diet, we're ketogenic, we've removed all of the fructose and refined carbohydrates from our diet, and we have a flare up of gout, what do we do? Why did that happen? Well, first of all, we have to remember that it's either the overproduction of uric acid or the inability to get rid of the uric acid. Now, if you have healthy kidneys, you shouldn't have a problem getting rid of the uric acid. However, when you go carnivore or ketogenic, you reduce your insulin production significantly. And when you do that, you tend to allow sodium to leave your bloodstream and into your kidneys. That's why ketogenic diets or carnivore diets require you to add salt to everything, right? Because your insulin goes down, you excrete the sodium, water gets pulled with it, you become mildly dehydrated. You can actually get cramps and cause all kinds kinds of problems, not causal kinds of problems, but people who experience cramps in the middle of the night when they're on a ketogenic or a carnivore type of diet because they've lost a lot of their electrolytes and sodium being one of the major electrolytes. It also pulls water with it when it leaves. If we don't replace it, we don't replenish that water and we become dehydrated. And when we become dehydrated, as you could imagine, the concentration of uric acid in our fluids is going to rise. So we want to become rehydrated. We want to take electrolytes lights, we want to make sure we add sodium or salt, good quality sea salt to our recipes when we're carnivore or keto. Another very popular thing among people who are carnivore or keto is they just love coffee, right? And I love coffee just innately, but we love coffee because it actually is an adrenal stimulant. It is going to kind of manufacture some energy for us. It contributes to lipolysis, the breaking down of fat to be used for energy. It also can kick up some glucose production by the adrenal glands the way cortisol would. However, caffeine or coffee is also a diuretic. It's going to result in further dehydration. So again, something to be aware of. So if you're experiencing pain associated with gout, what can you do about it? In addition to getting rehydrated, replenishing your electrolytes, all of those things are super important. What else can we do? Well, one thing that has been shown to be very helpful is sodium bicarbonate. So sodium bicarbonate, think about baking soda, right? So if you were to take some baking soda mixed with water and drink it, that's going to alkalize your urine and can help bring that uric acid flare up under control. In addition to that, sodium bicarbonate actually has an immunosuppressant kind of response that can decrease the immune attack that's going on against the purines in your joints. So in order to alkalize your urine, you may want to start with about an eighth of a teaspoon of baking soda into a glass of water. Make sure you do that on an empty stomach because you don't want to alkalize your stomach acid. It can cause some gastric distress, and that's why we start with an eighth of a teaspoon. We can, and over a day or two, can build it up to a half a teaspoon of baking soda to water. But again, to avoid gastric distress, try to do this on an empty stomach only. Now there are some transdermal sodium bicarbonate lotions that you can put directly on the big toe. I'll try to put a link below to a product that I think that would be helpful for you if you want to order it. But it's whenever you have this type of gouty arthritis, you'll do anything to get out of this pain. So getting rehydrated, restoring your electrolytes, trying the sodium bicarbonate lotion, trying the sodium bicarbonate on an empty stomach, making sure that you progress from an eighth of a teaspoon to a quarter of a teaspoon to no more than a half a teaspoon and do that about three times a day, again, on an empty stomach. Those things all together can go very far in removing your gouty arthritis and lowering your serum uric acid. It's always a good idea to get your blood checked as well to make sure that that's actually happening. If your uric acid is 5.5, 6.5, 7.5, you should start to see that come down.